A Bonhoeffer moment. Recently, a, uh, a preacher from the Southern Baptist Convention, I believe the head of the Southern Baptist Convention, made a pretty fiery ser gave a pretty fiery sermon regarding so-called same-gender marriage and said, no, we will defy you. And he said, we may be approaching a Bonhoeffer moment. I did not read the text of the entire sermon, so I don't know the context of that statement. But certainly a Bonhoeffer moment would mean, and that's code language for a moment of civil disobedience, of defying the government. For those of you who don't know, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a Lutheran pastor in Germany who was charismatic. I don't know if you knew that. He, he came to America and got involved with some Holy Ghost Pentecostal type people and had a real encounter with Christ and was a, was a brilliant theologian as well and decided he was in safety in America and he decided that he had to return to try and fight for what was right in Germany. And he was involved in an assassination plot against Hitler. He was arrested and was, if my memory is correct, nine days before his concentration camp was uh, liberated, that he was ordered executed by Goebbels himself. It might have been Himmler, but I think it was Goebbels who ordered him executed nine days before the, the camp was liberated. It was very close. It might have been even less time than that. This is horrifying. So he was involved in an assassination plot against Hitler. And this American preacher said, maybe this is a Bonhoeffer moment. I doubt very much that he was talking about that level of Dietrich Bonhoeffer's commitment. But that aside for a minute, I can hear people. I can hear people in my brain. I hear the voices of people saying, Germany has a legitimately elected government. They have a legitimately elected government. Hitler won the election. I think it was 33. And then the Reichstag voted him dictatorial, dictatorial powers. Let the weight of that impact you, okay? Hitler won an election. His party took control of the Reichstag. And then the Reichstag voted to give him, the elected representatives of the people of Germany, voted to give him dictatorial powers. And they... One by one, they passed these various laws that were oppressive, that were tyrannical, that were murderous, right? It was all legal, and it originated from the democratic process. And what did we do? Well, two things. We fought a war, yes, a war, and more importantly, we tried them as criminals. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? The German government was elected. It was a democratic process. They passed laws. They oppressed the innocent. Law gave them the right to kill innocent people. And then after the war, not only did we fight a war against people like that, but after the war, we tried their leaders for things that they did that were legal and that came to pass in a democratically elected government. Now just stop. Let the weight of that sink in on you. We have a, we have a democratically elected government. We have judges who have made it a legal act to murder innocent people. I weary at times of people comparing the American Holocaust of babies with the German Holocaust of Jews. And the reason I weary of it is not because the ethical comparison is not accurate. It is accurate. In some ways, the abortion Holocaust is worse. Some people, I'm gonna go on this rabbit trail because it's a good one for you, all right? Some people will say it's obscene to compare the German Holocaust against the Jews with the American Holocaust against babies because the Jews were born and they had lives and you know, they say these things. And there is something to that, to see a mother and a daughter and them wrenched apart and then the mother killed. It's horrific. But the Jews at least had the opportunity to flee, which some of them did, to plead for mercy, which some of them got, to hide, which some of them did, to fight back, which some of them did. Okay, They had these options at their disposal. What does a baby have? What does a baby in his or her mother's womb have? 
the, the maternal womb, the womb of a mother, it should be the safest place in the world for a baby. But instead, it's become a shooting gallery. A baby can't run. Baby can't plead for mercy. Baby can't hide. Baby can't take up arms and defend itself. So in some ways, the American Holocaust is worse, worse, because we've set our sights on a victim that is completely, totally helpless and should be the prize, the, the joy of, of the human family. Another life is coming into the world. Another life is inside of that woman right now and will soon be with us. Instead, we're killing them and throwing them out. So when I come back from this break, we'll continue on with the other discussion that we were having about democratically elected government murdering people and then us trying those criminals at Nuremberg and our own criminals. I'll be right back. <laughs> Do you want to get America out of the hands of wicked and unjust men and women who are destroying the republic before our eyes and put leadership back into the hands of righteous men and women so that we don't die as a nation? Well, you're talking about social revolution and there are rules in social revolution. We can look at the victorious social revolutions of the past, such as the end of slavery, the end of child labor, women's voting rights, the end of segregation, and so much more, and learn from their victories. Look at their actions, their images, their rhetoric, their sacrifices, and their final fruit. We will send you this series that originally cost $129, seven books for students, one teacher's guide, if you'll give a gift of any size and just pay for shipping and handling. Take advantage of it today.